So dear people, now um, I'm here with Dr. Arthur Rakimov again. My name is Volker Schmitz and this is the fifth part about videos um, which relate to dysautonomia. And now we want to talk about possible solutions. And one of them, among them, and maybe one of the best of them is breathing retraining. And maybe you can uh, inform us a little bit about the correlation between dysautonomia and uh, breathing retraining. When people, modern people, uh, particularly, why we are talking about modern situation, because dysautonomia in general became much more common uh, probably during the last about like 50, 60 years, mm -hmm. because in the past it was not so much research. In some areas, certain cases of dysautonomia were totally unknown. They did not exist even in medicine. Mm -hmm. But uh, last decades, we became much more common in terms of how many people, what is the rate of this condition among the population. And particularly among recent years, doctors actually started to do more particularly studies like what type of tests can be done. That's the reason why we uh, explained for different types of tests mm -hmm. and for different types of situations how we can easily just use in heart rate because you need to phone up and put your finger or oxygen. And sure. in the past, I remember like we would use polar sport tester or even do with uh, yeah. finger counting. Yeah. Like if you count your own heart rate every six or every 10 seconds, you can get uh, accurate enough results to test these effects. Now, what, what we are talking here about the reason of uh, such prevalence of appearance of this test definitely relates to abnormal or unstable state of the nervous system in normal population. Yeah. Because if we think about what was the briefing, normal briefing pattern in people living, let's say, 100 or 150 years ago, it was very close to the medical norm. So people would brief about 8, 10 breaths a minute, the medical norm is 12 breaths a minute. Yeah. They would have much more CO2, and they would have automatic pause in their briefing pattern. So inhale, exhale, when people have two, three, and Dr. Butek has addressed it, four seconds should be the normal time for rest. We're talking about unconscious when people... By, by the way, we have a long video <coughs> where we discuss this uh, table, tablet... Uh, Butteka table. The Butteka table of health zones. Of health which zones. Is very important, maybe... You Central part yeah, of the Butteka briefing training technique. So, uh, and then, of course, people would have very high level for the body oxygen test, which for Buteyko was 60 seconds, which is a very hard test. So, uh, uh, to have 60 seconds, which relates to how much oxygen we have and how heavy is our breathing, because mm -hmm. we need to have very light breathing with eight small breaths a minute of course. in order to have 60 seconds for the body oxygen. And medical norm would be to have 40 seconds for the body oxygen test, and medical norm for breathing would be 12 breaths in one minute. But that's the problem. This is what I started about. That modern people, they have somewhere around 15, 20 breaths a minute. Mm -hmm. And that's already the third and fourth degree of sickness, according to Buteyko Briefing Teachers and Dr. Buteyko. Now, what happens here is this Overbreathing leads to lower level of CO2, carbon dioxide. So these are the numbers of CO2 in alveoli and in arterial blood in the brain when people don't have ventilation perfusion this much. They have two levels of CO2. And according to many research, many research studies done in neurology, it's known that carbon dioxide is very powerful uh, calmative and sedative substance for the nerve cells. Yeah. And when people hyperventilate chronically, CO2 level in the brain gets reduced, and that makes nerve cells hyperactive. Mm -hmm. So hyperactivity of nervous system is manifested with many effects, because what happens here is the threshold of excitability of nerve cells get reduced, and that causes one very tricky effect, very tricky kind of... It's uh, Why? Because it causes so many different abnormalities in the nervous system, including autonomous nervous system. So the effect is following. When neuro neurologists uh, studied effects of low CO2 and hyperventilation in uh, normal, ordinary people, we found that we, uh, we discovered the effect which we described using the following phrase, which I like a lot, it's a kind of exact phrase. We wrote that hyperventilation leads to spontaneous and asynchronous firing of neurons. Yeah. So that means... You can imagine like a Christmas tree or something in the brain, like when this... In uh, the brain, yeah, it's, it's, it's electrical activity going yeah. on. So what happens when people hyperventilate, and here we again have like quite strong degree of hyperventilation, which is present in more than 99% yeah. of modern population, according to medical studies. You can see homepage of normalbriefing.com. I have like more than 
60-70 studies both related to diseases, but also for normal subjects, for ordinary yeah. people. So we brief, we brief too much. And that causes abnormal state of the nervous system. And that means that, what does it mean? Spontaneous and asynchronous firing of neurons. That means that any moment of time, all of a sudden, some weak signal, which is not supposed to yeah. get increased, all of a so sudden can get totally strong, strong important information or strong maybe response. even thought of Absolutely. or something. Yes, like. can get too much attention kind of from the brain. You maybe no people who have that to a certain degree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, people get kind of overexcited about some abnormal things and that makes them unable to see the world, kind of to process information, to make priorities in life, to uh, follow certain way, certain life plan, whatever we want to achieve, long-term goals. Sure. And therefore, uh, the solution which we suggest for people with dysautonomia, and I had students with different conditions related to dysautonomia, uh, is to retrain the breath, because the brief in retraining, the nervous system naturally becomes much more stable, and the balance between sympathetic and nervous system naturally gets yeah. more natural. People become much more tolerant yeah. to doing more physical exercise, to do different activities longer time without having negative effect, because otherwise, if somebody who is sick doing many types of work can cause too much stress, we just feel they yeah. cannot do it's it for a long time. And, uh, yeah, and, and yeah. we feel they feel that overactivity makes them stressed. Yeah. They get anxious, panic attacks, or get some other negative symptoms. Whereas with breath retraining, ability of people to work for more time increases a lot. So the full breathing retraining, even with my again, huge sport experience and knowing how to solve all this like parasympathetic, sympathetic, uh, general fatigue stress. Uh, in the past, now I, I see it in a, in a very different light that because of uh, having so many students who completely solve their health problems. Because yeah. it's not only just people who purely have autonomous nervous system dysregulation or dysautonomia or dysfunction related to overactivation of one or another system, but in addition, of course, a, a very large number of people who would have different neurological, psychological problems. Yeah. Because most people who would have, let's say, cancer, especially later stages, uh, many other hypertension, yeah. asthma, ordinary uh, diseases, they would have these psychological problems in addition yeah, to that. Sure. And what we can see now as students, you had also many students of your own whom yeah. you train, we were briefing retraining. Sometimes they do not even realize that they have this problem, but often they are like we in, just in this say, un unbalanced states uh, way too yeah. often, and this leads, of course, to uh, yeah, many, many uh, different uh, effects which can be very unhealthy. And people may not notice even like that we have too much anxiety or stress or panic. Yeah, exactly, because, because it was there for so many years. Yeah. They, do, they do not even know a balance in They're kind of state, more concerned yeah. about the diabetes or cancer because it's kind of, yeah, yeah look serious because doctors say cancer and the sure. mortality rate is high. Diabetes has complications. People die from stra so stroke very common and, and heart attacks. Yeah. And uh, But when we start to retrain their breath, we say, like, I feel so calm now, my sleep is so much better. Yeah. So all these positive effects of breathing retraining, they're kind of secondary, which yeah. secondary and in addition kind of, they can be often called as a natural side effects of breathing yeah. retraining. Yeah. And normalization of the nervous system is definitely one of the very strong effects when we retrain our breath. Therefore, it was in the past often... Um, very important before you even start with meditation in times of yoga where yoga was developed they often did a lot of breathing exercise before they even started with meditation mm -hmm. or at least they did it together so daily practice of so-called pranayama and so because they know it leads to much more concentrated states of mind and more calm often so yeah, breathing retraining definitely excellent way to for people to solve different type of dysautonomia and problems with autonomous nervous system.